there, welcome back to Insomniac Live. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. I hope that Corey hosting the show on Wednesday wasn't too... Were you rubbing your belly for turkey? Uh, yeah, Turkey coma? I ate a lot uh -huh. of turkey. Still recovering a, a little bit. A lot of turkey. Yeah. Uh, it looks like everything's still here. Corey didn't burn it down while I was gone on Wednesday, so that's great. My name's James Stevenson. I'm the community director at Insomniac Games, the host of Insomniac Live. Sitting next to me, Robbie Cox, joining me today. What's your title now? Uh, production Technical, technical support. support. I know. It's production Support Technician? It's production Support Technician. It's Production Technical right. Support. Right. They both kind of work in the same vein. That's but. what I thought. I was like, <laughs> yeah. all right. But I'll just ask, because I'm not a thousand percent. And we got a ton of people in the chat already. Um, quick shout outs to Wolf of Light 1, D Deek 16, Game Slam Team, uh, Rojizo, Rojizo, Picante. Thanks, you. Thanks to y'all for following uh, us on Twitch. We have lots of good shows this week. We've got some other good ones. We're gonna play Ratchet and Clank at Kraken Time today, yep. picking up where we left off the last time we streamed it. But we've got some other good ones. Like uh, I think we're playing. Wait, what are we playing on Wednesday? Uh, oh, we're gonna continue Uncharted: Lost Legacy with oh, nice. uh, Mike Yosh, who actually. Used to work at Naughty Dog, now he works here, but he didn't work on that game, so he's excited to play it. And then on Friday, we're going to play a game I've been enjoying a lot, which is Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, so, I haven't played either, though. Uh, I have finished Infinity... Uh, I have finished... Uh, uh, Uncharted? Uncharted. Uh, I just bought that, but I lost a chance to... It's good. It's really good. Uh, if you haven't played it, it's terrific. Um, but... Uh, the... Uh, but Assassin's Creed is a game where I don't think we're really planning on playing. And then, uh, what am I supposed to do here? I don't even remember now. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed after the No, I'm just supposed to glide. But yeah, it, and then I think there's the little pad right there where you can kind of cheat it if you if I need to. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think this is the, the double jump or the holding down X to glide or something. I missed a, uh, I missed a prompt. Yeah, there was a tutorial right there. I was like, <laughs> am I supposed to do a time grenade or something? Like... I swear, like nine times out of ten, when you you know think like I, I got this, I could just totally not. Oh, there's a double jump. That's what it. See, I forgot the double jump. This is my problem. Clank kind of doesn't have like a it, it's a double glide, weird. So I can see where it like kind of throws. Oh, you, and you can do it like three times. But you keep on just pressing it. Okay. Yeah, you can go like you can do like two additional like shots. No, uh, so. So, uh, yeah, Uncharted's great. We're looking forward to playing more of that. Origins, I really, like I said, we weren't really planning on playing it. Like, it wasn't on our schedule originally, but I've been enjoying it so much. And, like, it was funny because I think Ted was playing it this weekend over Thanksgiving because he came out of his office and he's like... So, wait, guys, is our save just busted on this game? Because we definitely played this before. Maybe we just forget to save it when we're done with the stream. That must be it. Yeah. <laughs> Do we use the latest save? That's 11. And it says two hours play. See, I thought you were uh, referencing Ted coming out of his office and then saying, hey guys, is, is the save busted after playing a Well, it's weird. It must be like auto save is messed up. Okay, well, you're going to see some you saw last time. Well, we'll try and get through it fast. That's we'll, we'll bizarre. We guys this. Bizarre. Because I, I think this happened last time. Uh, uh, last time we played, and I don't understand. Maybe my play, maybe the PlayStation Three is broken, uh, but is it a slim? Oh, it's the Fat Boy. No, it's a slim. It's a slim. Or, okay, I'm, see, I'm looking over at the other PlayStation Three test kit that's over there. So, because I'm confident this is where they started last time, but we had actually gotten through the first puzzles. Well, all right, you're gonna see some more uh, Ratchet and Clank. Um, I was curious about that. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, Orvis. I love these puzzles. Yeah. Then, while the chamber they were, is open, uh, end recording. Definitely tedious testing, though. I'll tell you that much. Next. Because it was trying to figure out all the various combinations. Yeah, all the various could. combinations. And especially, you know, coming in one day it works, the next the day, chamber, Monday, and it's not broken, and, and you, you know, go through it now, so many times. Like, I, I know this puzzle, only to realize that, oh, it's, there's a bug in it where I cannot okay, complete it at all. Yeah, definitely many hours uh, going through these puzzles. Temporal recording initiated. Yeah, that was the one fun thing with this game too, like speed running through it, like after uh, 
Yeah, I did just memorize the playthrough so much. I was the playthrough guy like for this game. So when we get a brand new build, it was like, alright, Rob, get on this and you know, no one can essentially like go home until you green check make sure that this playthrough this all actually works. Yeah. See, now it says it's saving in the lower left corner. That's what the moon means. I, it would indicate that it's doing that. Maybe the PlayStation's out of space. <laughs> We will make sure we manually save today. Um, uh, so, Fidelitron says, This is the first PS3 game I ever owned and a personal favorite. I love everything. You, love you guys and everything you do. Well, we love you too. We hope you come back and watch some more episodes with us. We've got a lot of good shows and we play a lot of games. Uh, Sheep from Poland and Cheeky Turtle 69. Thank you both for the follows. Yeah. Oh, you gotta. Oh, I gotta go up here to get my. So I can get my staff. Uh, I hope everyone. So we were talking about this at the beginning, but we should definitely talk about it more. How was your Thanksgiving break? We had everyone had four days off here. Closed the studio down Wednesday yep. night. Uh, I think Perforce itself was shut off over this time. So even if you wanted to work, yeah, you couldn't come in and work this weekend because they was, were upgrading that. Yeah, that was pretty much from the moment of like uh, eight o'clock that night, our last day of working. So it was, yeah, essentially they had like started the vacation for us, which was. You said pretty awesome. Not talk about a great place to work there. Um, so what'd you, what'd you do over the break? Did you play games? Did you? Um, I actually didn't play any games. I did a lot of uh, like Black Friday slash Cyber Monday, Cyber Weekend okay, shopping. So what, what's your loot? What's your best loot? Um, 4K TV. Oh, welcome, welcome to yeah. the future. Because I got that PS4 Pro from... Uh, doing the Pickle Rick costume, winning the uh, costume contest here, so I was like, I, I need a 4K TV to go along with the PS4 Pro, like, I, I'm kind of like living in the past, having myself plugged into a 1080p TV. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, any other good, uh, any other good swagger deals from uh, the holiday? Chat, do you guys do any good Black Friday shopping? Uh, yeah, play any good games over the break? Uh, I didn't. I traveled home to Nebraska, nice. uh, so I didn't actually get uh, much game time myself. Uh, I played a little bit of Mario on the plane. Uh, well, I want to say nice, but I know sometimes people are like, "Yeah, family, you know, it's a necessity." Did you have a good time? It was a good time. I have to go back again this weekend for another family function, which is kind of um, it's a little fun to have to go on two consecutive weekends. Um, but yeah, see, uh, that's where I add into the family, you know. Yeah, that's where it's like the okay. Well, <laughs> now the timing, the timing, guys, is not great on this. Yeah, uh, they're like, why don't you just work from Nebraska all week? And I was like, this, you know, I have a cracking time stream that I gotta do. Yeah, we've got shows. You guys would all, everyone in the chat would miss me. Yep. Maybe, maybe you'd be happy Corey's doing the show. <laughs> um, so I didn't play a lot, but I have bought a lot of random, like especially a lot of like 4K Blu-rays and. Um, a couple games here and there that were like, well, crack, like Nier was one I never picked up, so I got that like for 25 bucks. Nice. And, uh, and some random stuff, like there was a good like, electric toothbrush deal today. Yeah, there's so many random deals that, yeah, like you can't pass them up because, you know, you will be buying this item two months from now at, you know, double, triple the price of what it's, you know, discounted at right now, so. Yeah, it's, there's probably a lot of like stupid, like adult like things that I ended up buying. Yep, I did a bunch of those adult purchases. Um, uh, let's see, chat said, no, I just played Batman Telltale Season 2, Episode 3. Oh, that sounds fun. Um, uh, and that was Amazing Spider-Man who said that. Um, life is an unbalanced game where spawn camping gives you health, skill points, and perks are not, I don't know what that means at all. Uh, Game Slam Team said, I'm from Australia, no Thanksgiving here. Well, that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that's right. Dude. When do you get your good sales in Australia, Game Slam Team? Like, when, when is, when is the big sale? Oh, yeah. Would they, would like, when, what's your Black them? Friday equivalent? Yeah. I know you guys are just getting Amazon now, so, it's like, is, do you get Cyber Monday? Does yeah, it count? Yeah, that, that goes across the board. Uh, Game Slam Team also said he played a ton of Switch games. They bought a second Switch because wife was angry she never got to play it. Uh, my girlfriend steals mine all the time for uh, Tetris. See, that's pretty awesome, the fact that, you know, people are saying that. Because I feel like it was the opposite before where girlfriend would be like, put down your Xbox controller, you know, stop playing Call of Duty or whatever it is, but with Switch, you know, the fact that Nintendo games and so many games and portable and stuff, I'd, I've heard that from many others where they're like, yeah, my girlfriend you know, is stealing mine out of bed. I'm trying to 
you know, play Breath of the Wild, finish it, and my girlfriend's like, let me play. Yep, yep, you kind of got to have both. And it's also, <laughs> it's also great, you know, because you can play while you're not on TVs. Remaster Resistance says, sup guys, welcome back, James. Thanks, good to be back. Uh, Corey may come sit with us here in a little bit, just because, you know, uh, it's just me and Robbie today. I think it was a little slow today in the office. People were still getting back. A lot of people, I think, took Monday off to travel back. I don't mind. And avoid the, uh, avoid what I ran into, which was the insane surge and traffic at LAX last night. Oh, uh, you just got in last night? Yep. Oh it was bad. It was bad decision. I oh, can't even imagine. It was bad. That, that, that surge price on Uber, not good. Oh, not good at yeah. all. We'll just like that up like 700% or something yeah, crazy know, like that. It's probably like triple, but still, yeah. when you're talking about an airport ride, it's like it adds up real quick. It really does. Uh, all right, so now, okay, I know what I'm doing, I think. It's for your own safety. When we were working on this, um, Clank had like little black musical notes that would come out of that like uh, wand that he was carrying. Oh, interesting. Why were they musical notes? I have no idea, and I think it was only in like these specific areas in the Great Clock where like you'd stand there and all of a sudden see these black, you know, two D, just very uh, flat textured musical notes. I always love this one because you had to defend the other projection of Plank from those monsters. Oh, if you yeah, don't, yeah. He, they would hit him and then he would dissipate and the door would shut on you. Yeah, because it would mess up the way you recorded that track. Yeah. I'm, I'm so good at it, you guys don't get to see us mess it up, but trust me, it's possible. <laughs> I always love these levels, and I think, and actually, there's like, I mean, so one of the things we look back at at the time, and I remember, like, you can look at, you know, you can look at trophy data to see how far people made it through the game or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, uh, the trophy data was uh, um, proved like each one of these like great clock levels with these mind bending puzzles that you couldn't skip, like wiped out a huge chunk of the people playing the game. It was just like steps <laughs> every single time. Oh, you know what? That oh, you didn't gotta, work. I got to run off. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, yeah, I'm, see, it's I, all coming back to me. I know. I yeah. was, I'm looking at that. I'm one, like, wait a minute. Two, three. Okay, that's good. That'll work. Now we can do this. Then we then you have to go do the yeah. I, I remember this puzzle. I just was like, oh yeah, just stand there. No, that doesn't. That won't work. It's like, oh, he'll dissipate. No, he won't. And then you come up here and you fight your way through this. But you still have. To, and then he, once again, I think you still have to do this because. Oh no, you don't. Never mind. There's not a button over here. I was thinking there's gonna be a button here and then you have to switch oh. back and do the other one. Also, I always love how like the kind of cartoony effects that were almost like Wind Waker-ish for like the smoke and stuff that were in this game. Yeah. It's like one of the little things that. It was still in that era. I feel like the PS3 era wasn't, you know, quite like where we are with 4K and the HDR graphics. And, you know, the textures are looking just insanely lifelike. PS3 still have this. When you look back at it, like kind of like you said, it has that Wind Waker timeless, stylized type feel too. Right. And we definitely pulled that off well with Ratchets. See if I can get the timing right on this now, because if you saw, I caught this. Oh, see? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I remember. I think I'm going to have to re-record. Yeah, there being a quick way to do this one. I think... There's definitely... I definitely have the quickest route here, but I need to give myself more time to get on that. Yeah, yeah, I think. Uh... What was this, 2009 this came out? This game came out in 2009. Yeah, that's right, because we did... See, I screwed it up again. Fuse next. Okay, let's do this slow this time. Oh wait, you know what? Okay, you know what? I've got a better idea. One, two, three. Okay, now step on it. Which gives him enough time to get over here. There we go. Now this will work. Uh, do you have a special storyboard for people? Uh, oh, I see Sheep from Poland asked, do you have special storyboard artists uh, to do that, or do other people in the team handle it? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. We don't necessarily do a lot of storyboarding. Yeah. Uh, it's like part two of a question, talking about if the animators have special storyboard artists, but I think the animators kind of make their own storyboards, right? Yeah, I'd say usually it's yeah. like I kind of done in gray box, like we just make storyboards out of, you know, they, they're like all kind of pieced together very, you know, with a lot of like block uh, block assets and 
Um, then we figure out later, you know, if stuff works, th at that point you can move it around really easily. So it's usually handled by animators. Some major moments you may have actual concept pieces of like a moment or yeah. something that's kind of key or a camera angle, but it's not like a film where you do like a storyboard thumbnail of every scene. A lot of times you just make it gray in a gray box animation and then build it back together um, yeah. later on. There's a lot of that in this game. I'm trying to think back to like where we had actual like kind of like storyboarding cinematics. Warning. Like Resistance 3, maybe? Like that initial, like the guy getting his arm ripped off. From like yeah. The arm, like, that didn't make it into the game, but yeah, I think that was all sketched out, and like, but like shot by shot. But yeah, like you said, we don't really do that, tra like how traditional Disney or, you know, a TV show Rick and Morty would with all scenes like that. Oh, wait, right? Just slow him down. Oh. Yeah, that's what I gotta do. Okay. The hypersonic brain waves directly. Like this. Yeah. All right, now I should stay away though. I think. Uh, I thought this boss was not that hard for the level of, um, you know, just gameplay like through the the puzzles. And then by the time, maybe it was you know good because it gave that like, all right, I'm kicking this guy's ass now. This is this is awesome. After all those tedious puzzles. Yeah, I remember him being harder. He though. definitely was a lot. There was harder. like at one point yeah. in the game, he was like exceptionally. When we were making this, he was exceptionally yeah. difficult. Uh, it's partially because you only had so many hits, mm -hmm. and some of his stuff was just a lot more reliable than it is now. Like some of his attacks were really, really. Oh, clank hits like his hit points where he could only. Yeah, take yeah. Hit. I mean, clank can only take like five yeah, yeah. hits, or maybe you can only take three. And I think you had to hit him something like ten times. Or yeah, anything. and then like his 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 attacks were harder to dodge than they ended up. So this is save point. Yeah. Okay. There's. I was like, I see save point. Well, okay. There's. But it's point. obviously not working, as you think. Though I just earned the trophy. How did? It's got to be working. How did we not earn that trophy before? <laughs> I'm so confused. Is this a, the same PlayStation? It's yeah. It's the same one. Same exact machine and disc. I don't understand. We're in some sort of weird time loop. <laughs> Now, that's the whole joke. We just always, every few weeks, we play a crack in time and we always start it's back with yeah. because we're stuck in a time hey, loop of the, uh, the crack in time right there. Yeah. Uh, volatile Biscuit, Cracker Vizzo, thank you both for the follows. We appreciate that. Um, love having you on, or love having you watching. Uh, Game Slam team says we named our first son after Nolan North. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Did you tell Nolan North that? You should tweet him. Yeah, I would, think. I would tell him. Or if I ever saw him or something. Uh, Nolan North is the uh, caretaker. Of the plot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's he right. Is, no. no, no, wait. Hey, he's, he's in this. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, Charles uh, Martinet is someone, too, I think. Nolan's uh, Orbis, right? Is Nolan, no, Nolan's the caretaker. He's the, like, uh, Sigmund, and I think... Charles Martinet, Mario's voice is Orvis. Okay. I think that's right. Chat will tell me very quickly if I'm incorrect. This is true. What game are you more proud of, says Remaster Resistance? This or Resistance 4? I'm like, well, this one, because Resistance 4 yeah. doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I was going to say Resistance 4, but it doesn't exist. Yeah, so. I mean, what do you, I don't know what you're... I would love to say it does, but... Don't worry, Remaster Resistance. We'll get Marcus back in here. Hopefully, one more time before we leave on a holiday break, <laughs> and uh, and then we can all uh, see some more uh, Resistance Three and continue playing it. Uh, I love this whole like how he's uh, has this like fake kind of like script for this uh, Shakespearean play. And then they're I holding the script and all it's just shivering. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, pulling up the IMDb here. here. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that right. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Alright, now we have to fly the spaceship. Man, I'm, I'm just going to save just because I don't want anyone to ever have to play those puzzles again. Oh, I thought you were going to save the space segments. Or maybe the savings just busted. Look. Oh, there it is. I think it finally worked. I tried uh, the first two okay. times it showed nothing. There's always that momentary pause when you're like, it's working, and then it's 0%. Okay. It took like three seconds to... Well, did you see it? Like, a <laughs> yeah. couple times it just like zeroed out. Yeah. Uh, it just like kicked back to the menu, <laughs> so maybe there's something busted, but I think we have it fixed now. 
Oh man, the space Warden. combat. I'll head over there now. Corey, did you guys make it to Monoloth Fields last time? Yes. You did? Okay. That's uh, where you meet um, Azimuth. Right. Spoilers. Did you actually meet Azimuth last time? We're not even gonna fly around. I think you guys have seen all that. We can come back to that later. But that was like fun. The flying around parts. How much testing did that take? Um, so when it you changed a lot. It did uh, take a lot of time to test and changed a whole bunch. Dom, and I want to say Dave Dimov, who is like my manager, they like poured their hearts and souls into testing that. Yeah. Because we kind of had like a really small testing team. I want to say there was only like eight to ten of us. And they took like four of the testers that were permanent at the time and, and potted Tor, them up with in. like I just um, landed on Torn Four. One person I was the making like this level like, tester Azimuth? with that designer and all the etc. So they could just retain focus and, and uh, as you see it Volgram turned out really well. Mm. All right. I'm gonna let you take over control here soon if you want. Yeah, definitely. Um, and once you finish this IMDB research. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you were right. Nolan was... Nolan Sigmund. is Sigmund, and, and, and Charles a, Martinet is... Um, he does the Nefarious Trooper, apparently, too. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, camo crates. I forgot about camo crates. Also, there was one part that was fun about this was that Ratchet didn't have the ability to... Uh, oh, we may have to... Oh, man. Turn back Old on. school. Yeah, PS3 DualShock. Yeah, I had this uh, DualShock 4 in front of me. I was like, I'll just turn that one on. That actually probably works. We need to figure out, We need to sync it up. I think you can use DualShock 4s, which are way better than DualShock 3s in every single way. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, this level... or It's weird, though, because this game, you don't have Clank for most of the game on your back, so you don't have any of the... Uh, you don't have any ability to, like, hover... Uh, which yeah. is a pretty big deal for Ratchet not being able to like glide jump. Yeah, especially after you get used to it from coming yeah. off of like Ratchet and Clank PS4. Well, any like you think about any platformer, like the, the ability to glide jump and not have to deal with uh, like actually being accurate with your jumps, being able to hover down where you need to, is such a giant uh, thing. Pogdoc, thank you for the follow. If you're just tuning in right now, this is Insomniac Live. We're playing Ratchet and Clank Future, A Crack in Time, which is our 2009 oh. release on PlayStation 3. My name is James Stevenson. I'm here with Robbie Cox, who's one of our support tech... Yeah. Production support technicians. Hey, yeah, buddy, one of those works. And who worked on this game. Uh, we both worked on this game back in the day. Yep. Uh, and... Uh, I remember okay. someone dressing up as those enemies for Halloween. Oh yeah, someone did do a costume yeah. of those like guys with the blades. Yep. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> oh, so many S spin bots. Oh man, there was like we work on the Ratchet and Clank art book that's coming out from Dark Horse next year, and there's times where it's like I was trying to go back and do research to find the names of enemies, and you'd like go to the Ratchet Wikia, and there'd be like 50 enemy names, oh, and I'm so like, many. it could be like 20 of these, and I'd just be sitting there clicking, trying to figure out which one it actually was. Yeah. It's like oh man, what about spin the, uh, bots? That sounds right. What about the internal name for this project? Uh, which one? Uh, the crack in time. Which in, which internal oh, name? Oh, uh, clock blockers. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, I don't know if I'd say that was an internal name. Was it? It was. Or uh, something. I don't know. It was. I think it was RCF two. It was the internal yeah, name. Yeah, the right. internal name. Quest for Booty was definitely Quest for Booty the whole time. I just remember hearing, like, oh. I don't know how serious it was, but, like, it, yeah, they were trying to get clock blockers, then, like, nah, Sony didn't want it. And, like, was that really serious? Brian didn't <laughs> want it either. Like, there was, there was a lot. That was a very divisive name. But it we was had, on the table at some point? Or? I mean, it was in the on list. The <laughs> like, yeah. the, it's like if someone says, hey, we should name it this yeah, incredibly yeah, exactly. offensive thing. Does that yeah. really mean it ever had a chance? No. Um, but it was on the list. It was just it's it's just like Tennessee yeah. fans who think they can hire John Gruden. You throw it out there, but it's not <laughs> practical. John Gruden's never going to coach the Tennessee Volunteers. Like don't uh, don't think it's real. But Clockblockers, there it did immediately. It was a gigantic favorite of some people because it was very um, it was in tune with the theme of the game, which is time. You've seen it even in this level, like there's these little time areas, yep. and we and so it was it was definitely in that realm, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't deemed appropriate enough where they thought it might be bad. <laughs> but we did it, so we I don't see what they could think would be bad. Yeah, about that. Clockwalkers was definitely like on the more risque side. The one that made the one that actually was uh, when we were doing uh, all for one. 
that game's basically internally was known as four play. Oh yeah. Uh, its code name was four. It was basically like its code name was four play. Yep. Uh, we. De like we all agreed it should be four play, I've and that one Sony blocked it, and we said no, you can't make do it four play. And we're like, but it's gonna be like the number four dash play yep. for four players. No, you can't do it. And then you got South Park, uh, the uh, stick of truth, and then the fractured butthole. See, they, they right. well, South Park can get away with that. Yeah, though, yeah. I guess more so since they're like an M-rated game. I suppose if you're making an M-rated, you could call it whatever the hell you want. But, That's true. Um, I'll be honest, I missed the whole, like, like, I, like, I mean, I think I knew it was called Fractured But Whole, and I, and I just totally missed it, that could be the Fractured But Whole, <laughs> like, for, uh, for a period of time, it wasn't, it took, it yeah, wasn't yeah. like right away, I was just like, okay, Fractured But Whole, whatever, and I sort of filed it away at my memory banks, and then at some point I was like, wait, it's Fractured But, oh, I get it. <laughs> you took it apart, and, oh, wait a minute, okay. Uh, Fidelitron said, I'm disappointed Into the Nexus wasn't named Into the Nether Regions. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a bummer, too. Sometimes it's just a little too on the nose, though. That's the problem. I guess going commando is kind of on the nose, but um, you know, it's all a it's all a thing. Gravy biscuits. I'm a Gator fan, but not too thrilled with the Mullen hire. Feels bad, man. Scott Frost. <laughs> That's right. I think games were just more on the nose back in the day. With like Duke Nukem and it, 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 this more level of ridiculousness. Yeah, I, well, and I think it's just also, you know, like, do, there's certainly maybe a slight tonal shift, too. Oh, any new guns for us to pick up? Uh, someone asked, how is Bolt's money? I saw that earlier, and I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't see who it was. Um, I don't know how that got decided. Um, just yeah. probably works with a wrench, you know, a wrench, you need a bolt. Uh, Raphael Zagalin says, hello. Hey, dude, how's it going? Well, good to see you on the... Thanks. These were so awesome. Yeah, Tony Mora. It was Tony, right? Corey, I'm not I'm not crazy if Tony Mora made these. But he didn't work here at the time. I know, yeah, that's so he crazy. He didn't work here at the time. Yeah, uh, uh, Tony Mora, who's an artist, uh, does a lot of great TV. Yeah, he's awesome. He's really funny. He's, <laughs> he he fucks with Corey all the time, if that matters <laughs> to you guys. So, like, if I anyone... I would not imagine that. <laughs> if anyone can make... Like, you believe something that isn't true because Tony's deadpan is so good. Oh, how do we not have the Constructo Bomb? That's, like, cheap as hell. We can buy two weapons. Why is it discontinued? It's discounted. Oh, di Jesus Christ. It's discounted. Thousand is cheap. Oh, yeah. Uh, he made all these, and he did a bunch of stuff with... Uh, uh, for this, and then he came in and worked in house, and then uh, uh, he was here for Song of the Deep. And I made that stuff too. That that yeah, sense. he does stuff and I made bit and just all sorts of things for their shows. And he's he's great. Um, and he's a super retro game collector too. I actually bought a bunch of my old game stuff when I when I sold out my old game collection. And then he worked on like the right. animated Teen Titans movie or something. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Corey would even know probably more. Hey, yeah, get the Dynamo of get Doom. Yeah, I, think, I think you have, yeah, you got the money for it. All right. You gotta buy that. I do like it we show, like, the coming soon to, like... I think this was the one, too, that had the six axis. Oh, is it? You're right, yeah. you're right. You could steer the Dynamo of Doom, right? Yeah, right, let's see. Oh, six axis. Oh, man, motion controls. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you can totally steer it. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> you steer that. That's why we have to use that. We can't use a dual shock. We'll be able to steal your Dynamo. <laughs> And it gets bigger and bigger. It's like it was like Katamari Damacy in a thing. Uh, Gravy biscuit. So my Huskers fan. Dang right I am. Scott Frost coming home. He's our man. He's gonna be great. Actually, I will say Gravy Biscuits. Dan Mullen, compared to some of the other options out there, Dan Mullen is a good choice. I would not have been sad in Nebraska if we had ended up with Dan Mullen if Frost had said no. Although we would have gone with Justin Fuente from Virginia Tech. And, uh, Frost said no, which I mean he still technically could, but from all indications it's done. Um, let's see. Yeah, we had some really cool figures for this game too. Yeah, I did work on action figures for this game, and we had a there's a fan weapon that was in this game. Yep. Think That's of that, which is cool, which we haven't gotten to this far. Like, yeah, reminded me of it. Yeah, they pulled <laughs> out from it. Yeah, I, uh, those action figures are kind of hard to find these days. Dude, I literally that's so I was looking at eBay like two days ago to get the uh, what the spiral death weapon, and on eBay and like sold out everywhere. Eighty bucks for me if I wanted to buy it. Yeah, there. 
So hear that? Toy companies, Ratchet action figures go for 80 bucks now. Yeah. I actually used to have, like, extras, and I slowly gave them all out to, like, various fans and uh, stuff. So I literally just have my original set now, and that's all I have. I have one set of, I have, and there's nine different figures. Are those um, the ones that are near your desk? They are all across the top of my desk. Though, if you want some new cool new merch, um, ESC Toy just released uh, some new pins and plushies. Uh, another Stubbins, Stubbins, I think, is another plushie company that just released this uh, a plushie. Um, oh, some they, new Ratchet plushies. Those are the uh, officially licensed ones, right? They're, they're all officially licensed. Then there's... Um, I think they have a pack and turn like model that they did. Yeah, they, they very well might. Uh, but it was like rare. Yeah. Right? Like exclusive to something. Yeah, there might be one that's uh, exclusive to the PlayStation Gear store. And the others are on Amazon, so... Um, and uh, ESC Toy has a new vinyl set coming soon. Uh, so oh, yeah, that's right. If you're looking for Ratchet merch uh, stuff for everyone, plus you know there's also the art book which you can pre-order and should be out I think in March, but somewhere in there sometime in spring. Um, let's see. Uh, Philippe Pike. Philippe Pike, thanks for the follow. Networker M, thank you for following. Nathan Blacksmith, appreciate the follow. Schick. Or chic, I don't know. Thank you for the follow. Pogdoc asked earlier, "What's your favorite Ratchet and Clank game?" This one for sure. This one for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chat, what's your favorite Ratchet and Clank game? I see a lot of people are answering that game already. Um, I uh, I would say this one. Uh, I, it's, I I I'm torn between three generally. This one's definitely my favorite of the PS3 ones, and I think going Commando and up your arsenal. Now, I think just campaign wise though I'd say going commando these days whereas the multiplayer made up your arsenal up there but I think I would say going commando or this one probably did you those play two. those during the time of them coming out yes okay yes. so I tried to rec retroactively go back and play them because I just didn't play them at the time like, right this was my first ratchet game, game that I ever played at slash work on so I went back and tried to play all the earlier ones but just didn't do it for you. As no, well. I wasn't able to, you know, finish them. I'm, like, I'm kind of that gamer. I feel like if I don't have a nostalgic, like, you know, um, it's hard for you to go play like archaic games. It, it really is. Mm. Well, we should start bringing you in here for like NES stuff. Well, dude, yeah, I have a. Well, lot that's where you gotta throw one in there. Or you already got one up there, right? Yeah, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, Crack in, uh, crack in Time. Um, oh, uh, Turtles in Time. Yeah, oh, and Turtles in Time. Mm -hmm. No, you got to go down to the. You just started the conveyor belt, right? And you have to go down and into oh, the yeah. conveyor belt thing. That's right. Um, and it's an X Centauri says I think Ratchet and Clank choose the best in the series. Up your arsenal is really rushed. Ratchet doesn't e even have a decent idle animation. Uh, Game Slam Team says I like Nexus the best. Best. Wow. All right, that's cool. Yeah, Nexus has a fun, weird, like not weird, but different feel to it. It is a little different um, because it's kind of that spooky, haunted. I, yeah. I do love the atmosphere of that game quite a bit, and I think that game was criminally underplayed because it unfortunately came out after the PS4 launch, and everyone kind of been moved on. Um, that's I, a great I, way to put it, though. It definitely does have like a spooky, rational feel to it. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like that Luigi's Mansion, but not too ghosty, but like. The yeah. way like Luigi's Mansion switched it up and made it a little more spooky. Yeah. I think, oh man, pounded. Right. Look at that. Pound, hands the controller over right away. Of course. Um, Weisel Peppa says, uh, let's see here. It says, uh, Kraken Time. Um, yeah, level two. That's right. I just realized that I was not even using like any of my weapons. No, you were just wrenching it. Yeah. You were going wrench play through there. Which, I mean, none of, nothing was really that threatening that you were fighting. True. Okay, let's not get smashed, because I don't want to suffer the same fate that you just did. That'd be embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, Tools of Destruction was my favorite, because it was the first one I played. Yeah, that's fair. All right, that's fair. That was uh, Nalen Blacksmith. Todd. Oh, see? I was like, oh, I shouldn't go. Oh, I shouldn't go. Oh, I'll go. And then I get hammered. <laughs> Sheep from Poland. Kraken Time got me into the series. I love that dude's name. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah, do you actually have sheep in there in Poland? I've been visited Poland on, uh... Actually, <laughs> the Kraken Time press tour. I visited Poland, TJ Fixman and I. 
TJ, good man. Yeah, man, this this thing levels up immediately. Seriously, like, like <laughs> yeah. it was like I didn't even do anything. I, I like kind of breathed for a little while and it <laughs> leveled up. Um, yeah, we visited Poland. We actually get to spend a week in there, and they set up a tour of Warsaw for us, which was pretty cool. And we ate at this nice restaurant, and it was a lot of fun hanging out there. Um, these cutscenes are always just beautiful too. Seriously. Excuse like they look me? amazing uh, for the time. Like, you know if you them to yeah, and I mean part of it too is you know we were able to. Um, these were not real time, uh, which was a big, which was a big deal. But but even still, like, they look still look good. But I mean, you compare it to like you know even like CG, some CG movies, like yeah. they're, they're kind of CG movie quality. We wouldn't be able to do the quality we wanted with real time. I think at that point now we you know are much more real time focused. But I could watch like an hour long movie in that quality. In oh, for sure, style. for sure. If it's done well, yeah. I forgot you had this grind boot sequence with Azimuth. Yeah. And this is actually the area we first teased the game with, was like when we did the teaser for um, A Crack in Time, we didn't have much to show yet because the team oh. the team had been working on uh, uh, Quest for Booty, so it actually kind of stole a lot of the time. This game was made really, really fast um, because a lot of the pre-production time that normally would have spent in pre-production we were making Quest for Booty, which I think was a little ahead of its time too. On oh my god! <laughs> you get another go All at right. it. You get another go at it. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't even know what I was saying. Uh, the, like stealing time. From oh the yeah, so I think it stole time. It stole a little bit of time from the production. And like now you think about games where they put all these expansions out to the game. Like Quest for Booty was kind of like that. And, and Quest for Booty, funny thing, did so well. Sony was really really happy for a long time because it. You know, it's this cheap game. Yeah. Um, but the big reason it did well was there's a physical version of it in Europe because people didn't really download That's games. So it was ahead of its time, but then there's this like cheap $15 yep. physical copy, and Ratchet games always sold well at that point, especially at that time on PS4, everything, or PS3, everything was really expensive. If you remember, like, oh, yeah. you know, Resistance was $60 for like a year and a half, yep. Heavenly Sword was $60 for a year and a half. It took them forever to start a greatest hits program. Yep. Um, and back then, Sony wouldn't drop their game prices until they became greatest hits, so. Well, that was great for Resistance, and it sat there selling for sixty dollars because people wanted to play it. Other games just like suffered. Um, and you, you had know. this discounted title, which was yeah. and so having a discounted Ratchet, like Tools of Destruction, did fine, but having that discounted twenty dollar Ratchet game, even though it was short, um, was pretty compelling. Which also came out like shortly after the release of um, Tools of Destruction, right? Like it wasn't that much long of a gap. Yeah, it was about nine months maybe. Cause this yeah. came out in like July or August. Um, well, so maybe even a little more like ten months, nine or ten months. But I gave that year, so there was a ratchet game every single year for yeah. that three years. So a year into the PlayStation, it was like bam, bam, bam. Um, which a lot of people, you know, by the time we released this game, we had shipped Resistance, Resistance Two, Ratchet, Ratchet, and Tools. We had shipped five PlayStation games that all were pretty well rated. Yeah. Quest for Booty was kind of weirdly low rated because of the price, and people didn't know how to review games like that at that time. I think it would have done better in this era. Well, that was what brought me into Insomniac. Quest for Booty. Because you guys had just had your rap party and it was like in magazines and all that kind of stuff. And just like your I had just gotten let go from THQ. Thank God at that time. Because <laughs> I feel like it, was it only got worse. Yeah. Yeah. It only got worse yeah. from there. Totally. I got out before the storm hit. You just got here with the Quest for Booty rap party? Yeah. That was an infamous rap party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a bunch of us went down to the Pirate Dinner Theater in the Orange County. Um, got pretty pretty buzzed on some pirate grog. And then returned to the office to find a bunch of people that were like trying to finish Resistance 2. So, um, Marcus wasn't pleased. Uh, Game Slam Team says, I play Quest for Booty probably once a year. That's awesome. Yeah. So they were talking about the Jamaican bobsled team. I actually have bobsled in Jamaica, which is pretty cool. What? Yeah. yeah. You legitimately rode in a bobsled? And it was kind of a fake bobsled, okay. but it still was the idea of bobsledding in Jamaica. It was a really touristy thing. Was it one of those like the, the on like the metal? Uh, yeah, on the metal track. Whatever, yeah. 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 It's still, those things are fun as shit. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I went and had really good Jamaican jerk, and it was great. Uh, the future series in Australia is still fifty dollars each. First party titles never drop. Jesus. I assume there's not really many new copies of the future series at this point, which is probably part of it. Um, I feel like they're only twenty dollars here though, twenty maybe thirty. 
Uh, if you like, if you went on the, I don't know if you can even digitally download these games yeah. on PS3. I, mean, I was just gonna ask because like a lot of like that was the thing. Games back then we weren't even making like the digital vers version for download. Now you yeah. automatically do that, and every game is downloadable. But early PS3 games, it wasn't even a sure thing a game would be available digitally if it was no. a full size game. And so, uh, let's see, Fur looks really good for a PS3 game, says Remaster Resistance, thanks a bunch. Yeah, we worked a long time on the Fur, trying to get it as good as possible. And then we worked a long time on this, like the hover boots were a really big deal. Because um, we wanted to have these like wide open levels, or, mu or much larger levels, or a little more non-linear, and that was kind of a big focus, and this is the first area like that where you get these boots and you can fly around and go off of stuff. And kind of like play around a little bit too. I remember using this for like a usability uh, test mm. and having to like test this section like over and over and over again, and Azimuth kept breaking like in that area where he was like, alright, come over here, Ratchet, now meet up with me. And like he was just... Yeah. Like, okay, here, learn how to use these bounce pads and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Kevin123461 uh, Derek, 24 fan, KJ Rules, 123. Thank you all for following. And Lincolnito, thanks for hosting our, sh our show on your channel. That's awesome. Thanks to all your viewers there who are tuning in. Looks like you got a few keeping an eye on your channel. Um, oh, Remastered Resistance. Can I get opinions from everyone on this? Couch, Corey, and chat. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Uh, yes. Yes. One hundred percent. Yes. I have. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, 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 no! You got it. You got right. it. I have that sweater. Oh, you have the you have the ho oh, yeah. ho oh, no! I have a machine gun. Yeah. Okay, Corey. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. He responded in the chat. Yes, it's regards the greatest Christmas movie. I would also agree. Um, yes, it's a Christmas movie. I'm curious what the chat. Fidelitron says yes, it's a Christmas movie. No question. Uh, let's see uh, who else talking about it so I'm talking about I hate these people who think it isn't a Christmas movie but yeah. Frozen is Frozen is not a Christmas movie it's a winter movie but it's not a Christmas movie Frozen is not a movie I watch so. have you ever seen Frozen? yeah sadly why it's good I, I couldn't oh, I, I, got, I have something to say about Frozen okay you get over here to talk about it I'm gonna like uh, say if you're just tuning in this is Insomniac Live uh, we are playing Ratchet and Clank Future or Crack in Time. Uh, this is our show where we play our games, other people's games. Click that follow button. Uh, thanks, Li uh, Lincolnito, for following us. We've got great shows coming up this week, like uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy uh, with Mike Yosh, who used to be work at Naughty Dog and now works here at Insomniac, as well as Assassin's Creed Origins. We're also going to have a really fun special show next week, which I'm not going to spoil, but it's going to involve uh, pain. A lot of pain for the people that are on the show, including oh, myself. I have something to talk to you relative to that. Okay, I I, I hope you want in. Yes. Um. Now, back to Frozen being a Christmas. Well, okay. I think we all agree it's not a good Chris. It's not a Christmas movie. But I say it's good. Robbie says it's terrible, and he unfortunately saw it. Corey left the computer to come sit okay. on the couch <laughs> and talk about it. Okay. So what do we have to say so, about so Frozen? Thanksgiving? And that movie Coco just came out. Oh yeah, yeah. And, oh no, uh, I heard there's like a thirty hour short. Or yeah, yeah. So short. <laughs> I, I, like, how can you call I, it a short? It was like my family minutes. Took my family to go see Coco for Thanksgiving. And we're all looking forward to it, and it's like this great family film all about family. And like, you know, this one guy has a passion for you know being like an on the road musician, but he doesn't want to leave his family behind. And da da da. And um, we're all excited to see that. And then. 30 minutes of the stupid Frozen short at the beginning that's full screen aspect ratio <laughs> so you're in the theater watching this like pillar box screen no. Wait, it's not 16 by 9 it's 4 by 3 it's, it's well it's maybe a little more than 4 by 3 but it's like it's not widescreen though it's like made for TV and it has a production value of one of those like bargain bin Wait, so they got Barbie black movies, movies on the side yeah yeah oh. like you know those like Barbie you know Walmart dollar bin like movies that you know, like you feel bad for whatever yeah, yeah, kid exactly. has to watch that instead of like legitimate entertainment. Yeah, that's what the production value of this thing was like. All the camera angles are like just a like flat. Son of the mask and mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's no cinematography at all. There's no artisanship. The songs are awful. Like. My whole family, we were all rolling our eyes because yeah, there's like 10 oh. seconds of plot development and then they're like, 
get into a song and just oh another guy and they're not like catchy songs or anything there's a little so snowman not good songs like the original movie i've actually never seen the original but going off of what i saw in this short i've seen enough all right like i hate frozen now with a passion i think it's awful i okay. heard a similar complaint from someone else I, i've heard the same thing that short's bad so i haven't seen it yet so it I just goes on judge. and on. i had no idea there was a short that long in front of it which is crazy to me um but I ruined the total experience. I mean, Coco's still decent, but like, yeah, it sets you in that bad mood. Yeah, I've heard Coco is good. I've heard it's tough because frozen. The short is not. It's like you're gonna eat a and nice again, meal. Like and I, then, I, I and you have to that. watch a dog take a shit like right in front <laughs> of you, like right before you have to eat the meal, and you're like, well, I would have liked to just go right to the restaurant without having to see that. I'm not really as hungry anymore. So I well I, I guess I'll find out when I see it. I think you can leave the planet. Yeah, though, I was right? like, I, I think, think I'm done. done right? I think you're done. You're yeah, I, oh yeah, planet. I gotta come back and do the other stuff. Yeah, you come back later after you have. Uh, I really like the Frozen Ride at Epcot. It's not great, but it's still good. You're probably right that a tw- I just think twenty minutes of anything like not ex- like when you when you've gone through previews and all that and then suddenly have mm-hmm. to watch 20 minutes of something else like pixar's had some bad shorts i've thought that some shorts i didn't like yeah. or, or and even disney when they've done some shorts there's some stuff i didn't like but at least they're over in like six or seven minutes so it's like by the time you really are like god i wish this was over but i can't imagine there being 20 25 minutes of something where you're like oh my god this oh, is okay. rough Oh, now you get a play? No, yeah. All right. 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 Someone was asking earlier about if there's ever been, like, a no-death perfect playthrough. Well, Well, you're going to see it right now, baby. (laughs) You're going to die, like, right here in space. It's going to happen. What is my objective? (laughs) Uh, Travel to Axiom City, which is that blue thing. The yellow. The blue, yeah, the blue, yellow. I think it's that planet. The blue one with the yellow beacon. Did you guys make it to Axiom City last time? Uh, I don't think it's so. Weird, those weird squid dudes, oh, yeah, the arachnoids. So this is easy. All I have to do is just fly over there. I have a screenshot of it. Yeah, super easy. We saved all these NSF. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait! I'm getting shot at and, now. Uh, no, you use the. You have to thrust through the barrier. Oh, I was doing that. I thought I was dying. Oh, I'm just kind of going into the atmosphere. Yeah. Through. Oh, yeah, okay. you can punch through. Oh. Uh, <laughs> amazing Spider-Man. Through. Amazing Still Spider-Man. Good news is Star Wars is coming. Yeah. Uh, imagine if there was like a 20-minute crappy like. Uh, Short and yeah. of Star Wars, like to Star no. Trek. If um, anything, the thing that gets me pumped up before that is seeing the like, all right, Marvel trailer. Okay, cool, another mm-hmm. Star Wars. Tra- okay, sweet, all these superhero trailers. Boom, right into the epic movie. Yeah. Uh, remaster says he's going to the Star Wars Midnight release night of the thirteenth. Hype mate. Hopefully, um, doesn't go to Shelly Jones before. <laughs> well, it's weird. Like, I guess you guys get it. At, you guys get it at midnight. <laughs> What's it called the Re- the box, the rumble box thing. Was it? Oh, D box. Yeah, D box. A D box with Chili Johns. <laughs> Chili Johns is a classic restaurant. It's the oldest restaurant here in Burbank. And Walt Disney and the animators used to go there. They serve Cincinnati style chili, How which is kind of meat not tasty. Uh, you jump and press circle. I'm doing that. Or do you have to do some? I'm gonna fall off the cliff if I do it. If I jump out and do it, I'm just gonna fall to my death. <laughs> and you gotta get this no death play. Did I? There you go. Press oh, up. There you go. There it goes. Okay. All right. Uh oh. There's a. This is Zony. Uh, I don't have a Tesla spikes. I'm gonna get a Tesla. You can't afford one. <laughs> <laughs> True in life. True in video games. <laughs> uh, oh. Um. No, I see you might need to buy armor too. All right. Uh, Give me a Michael Jackson glove. I was gonna say though we did uh, a. Yeah, come back. Oh, see so you can't afford. Should that. I waste That'll all keep, of it? No, yeah, you should because it'll keep you alive, and you don't want to die. Yeah. Uh, I need handicaps. It's cool you guys get the midnight showings. We don't get showings till fourteenth Thursday the fourteenth at six p.m. and they jacked the prices for all the six p.m. screenings. Wait, when are um, the other shows? I don't know. Wherever you're seeing it, I, like a lot of movies uh, now are coming out over in Europe first. Oh I think yeah, yeah. Piracy oh reasons. Now. Like I guess we're really good at pirating the movies okay. here. But I kind of hate that with YouTube because I'll go on YouTube and there'll be like all the guys that I watch or whatever. They'll have their spoiler review videos like two weeks before like Thor Ragnarok yeah. comes out, and I'm like, what? And it's because they're like, like you said. Yeah, it's like I mean, I saw Guardians a week early when I was in Denmark earlier this year, and I tweeted James Gunn about it, and he was like, well, there goes our North American box office. I'm like, don't <laughs> worry, dude, I got tickets opening night. What am I doing? Too. You jump, jump on that. Up to jump. there? Just jump, yeah. Oh. Uh, I was going to say, I don't blame you. I was in Denmark too, a week before I was there, we do the same thing. Yeah. Was oh. it an English viewing? Like, yeah, okay. a lot of movies in Europe 
uh, or at least in Western Europe. I'm not sure about other parts, but uh, they show the English version with subtitles um, because people would rather see that than a dubbed version. Much so like I'd rather watch a lot of like foreign movies. I'd rather watch the dubbed version. Exactly. With, or I'd rather watch the the, for, the original language version with subtitles, and they have that same thing. A lot of people understand English very very well too. So the so, only downside there is just like you see a movie early, but then you just have a little visual noise on the screen. Yeah, some subtitles, which isn't really a big deal. No, uh, will I die if I jump over that? No, you want to drop yourself into one of those carts. So you need to time it so that you'll land on top. Oh, of that. I see. Okay. No. Uh, what's Cincinnati style chili with cinnamon? No gravy biscuits. It's like it's like very uh, thick meat pasty like. You would eat Cincinnati style chili like on top of spaghetti, so it's almost it could almost be like a sauce if that makes sense. Like yeah. it's so it's closer to a ragu than it is to a like a, it's more like a ragu than it is like a soup or yeah. a stew. Wait, wasn't I already over here? That's the no, that's the oh so close. Uh, Medellin den or Medellin den? I uh, Medellin dev or Medellin dev? Thanks for the follow and Falgen, thanks for hosting. Would you like to modify your constructor weapon? Okay. Uh, oh yeah, because sure. you got more stuff for your weapon. These were one of the fun things too. It was like, okay, people always want to build their own weapon. It was kind of went along with the fan build your weapon. Is hey, Ooh, you can change. That's gone commando. That's the going commando paint job yeah. for it. And there's the Angela special, which is just like fucking us rubbing salt in the fans' wounds about Angela. I mean, Jesus, what were we thinking? Mm. Sorry, <laughs> Angela, man. Yeah. Wasn't she supposed to be a Lombax too? Oh, let's not. Can we not do this right now, please? <laughs> you already put salt in the wound. Come I on, know. Let's just stop. Let's festering. stop there. Let's <laughs> stop there. Where am uh, I trying to go now? Uh, I don't know. Figure it out, Kurt. You're the one who said you're like no, no death playthrough here. Uh, yeah, I didn't say solve puzzle playthrough. I said don't die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that where that my means, ship is, yeah, though, right? Oh well, maybe you just completed I that think circuit. You have to like, yeah, the circuit. To that was like get a that. circuit. Yeah. Okay, now, and just start over now. Oh, there's the zone. You want to get that Whoa, zone. whoa, whoa. Ah! Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> All's oh. fine. Uh, so close to death. You want to catch that zoni. I know you want to catch that zoni first. You gotta have your hover boots on the catch that. What the? Hey! No, you didn't. I broke the game. No, you didn't. Dude, we didn't save. God damn it. I think it's saved when he flew to the planet, but yeah. It's like, not the stream or anything, right? It's like the that game That is literally itself. the game that is broken. Press the, the PlayStation. Uh -oh. Robbie? What the fuck, oh, man? No. This, is, this is on me right here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I don't even think you could probably reset. I mean, you're probably hard locked out for me. Speaking of Die Hard, I can do a riddle for the chat right now. So is that... Die like, Hard 3. So you didn't die, though, but... No, I didn't die, no. <laughs> I, I made PlayStation die. Holy so, shit. So what about Die Hard 3? Okay, this is because we brought up die Angela. This is, this is like, <laughs> so like the ratchet fan gods cursing us for talking um, about Angela. The guy, the, the terrorist guy calls McLean on the phone and he's like, okay, you have 30 seconds to answer this or else I'm going to blow you up. Yeah. So um, I met a man who was going to St. Ives and the man had seven wives. Each wife had seven sacks. Inside each sack had seven cats. How many were going to St. Ives? What? I wasn't paying attention, sorry. And then he's like, the clock's ticking, McLean. Ten, nine, <laughs> eight. And then Samuel Jackson's yelling at him like, just answer the question, we're going to blow up. Da, da, da. And there's a trick question. Chat, do you guys know? I don't remember. I Three. Kinda... I don't know. The, if anyone in the chat answers knows the question. Yes. Rex one. Liquid got it. Uh, Rex, Liquid, Rex Liquid, thanks for the... Here. One man. It's one, yeah. It's just the one man going to St. Ives. Like, and he, Samuel Jackson points out in the movie, he's like, because Bruce Willis is like, well, what's the wife doing? He's like, I don't know, sitting at home, it doesn't matter, who gives a shit? And it's just the one guy that he met going to St. Ives. Anyway, just a uh, time killer while we reboot the game. Ratchet Extreme 6, and what made you guys add a dual lightsaber cheat for up your arsenal? I'm going to guess it was like loving Star Wars. Yeah. Mainly because we all really like Star Wars, and we're all very excited for. Was that like around the prequel? It would have been up your arsenal. Would have been post Attack of the Clones. Okay, so, so still in the prequel like era. Yeah, cause, yeah. or yeah, because Deadlock came out the same year Revenge of the Sith did. Revenge of the Sith was coming out. 
God help us, please save, save. Oh, look at that! Actually, the saving is working now. We won't. That's good. That's good. Who's your favorite Jedi? My favorite Jedi? Yep. Whew. Uh, I do like Obi Wan Kenobi, especially. I mean, Alec Guinness is Obi Wan Kenobi. Is everything okay? Is it? Oh, you're seeing it. Yeah, we're seeing it. Are you not seeing oh, it? Oh, I think when we went back into the PlayStation, maybe it, uh, here, hold on one sec. Oh, can you guys not see the game anymore? I want to say Mace Windu, for me. Or yeah, you like that purple lightsaber? I just like his ridiculousness. And his whole backstory about how he there says he's not dead. Know. Did you hear that? He, Samuel was in a... It's like, oh, he's not dead? Yeah, he's not dead because of, like, uh... He's like, haven't you seen the other, uh... Jedi's, you know, they jump off of buildings. They jump 50 feet. Yeah, he just fell. He's still alive somewhere. Nah, it's okay. You don't need to change that. And then he's also got the same theory for, uh, that's where, what's his name is at? That, who? Uh, Samuel L's character in The Avengers. I mean, like, not that he's dead, but, um, someone was asking him, like, if he was going to show up in, uh, Infinity War. Or, like, why oh. he's not cast in Infinity War. And he was like, you know, I'm off doing, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff. I'm still looking for the skull. The skull's out there somewhere. I'm trying to find out where he's at. <laughs> Samuel's just crazy, dude. I think I got that zony. <laughs> I thought it crashed. What's, <laughs> what? Are you having capture card issues? What? Yeah, when the turning the game on and off again, like, I don't know. Screw it up. One sec. We're on it. Alright. Oh, no! No! Oh, I was like so good through like all the capture card issues. <laughs> yeah. No, and no, then no. that all just went to hell. Uh, Winks, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Uh, thank you for the follow. And Akira Komera, thank you for the follow. Though your name is a little close to Kamara, who stole a ton of yards from Mark Ingram yesterday, and that hurt my fantasy team. So, meh. But that's fine. Still, thank you for following. Um, Pogdox says, what's your opinion? Oh, man, the question went away off the screen, but what's your opinion on Size Matters and Secret Agent Clank? Um, oh. We didn't make them. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, I think, uh, I especially thought Size Matters was fun on the PSP. It was a fun, portable version of the game. And Secret Agent Clank was... I like his little outfit. Yeah. I mean, I always liked the idea of Secret Agent Clank. Yeah. It was kind of a weird... All right, we gotta unplug it. Got on... Oh, it's a... Okay, we're having an HDMI, uh... Yeah, I never had one of the Secret Agent Clank figures that, like, everyone got here for the game. And then, uh... It's funny, because those weren't even for us. I think those were for, um... Their game, and then they sent us over, like... like one of they those sent over, things. like... It was, like, a pre-order bonus for Secret Agent Clank, and they sent over, like, 200... A bag of, like, 200 of the... So you gave Secret them outside, Yeah. Or you never had one. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut your story off. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, I realized that as I'm like, man... Hey, it did added you get one? It, uh, yeah, I eventually got one, like, a year and a half ago, because uh, Brian Schmalz left, and... And he, and he handed it over. Yeah. Or someone left, yeah, I don't know, and I was, like, cleaning out their desk. I was like, yeah, came up. All right, we good now? We good? Uh, we good? I think so. We good? Man, that crash yeah. just like, that was some severe oh, Angela Lombax, like. Someone was asking, uh, hey, James, are there any of the Marksman replicas, the one behind you, available to buy online? No, that's the only yeah. one that exists. I know. All those replica guns are pretty much one-offs. Or, or not pretty much, they are all one off. Uh, there may be a couple marksmen. I don't know if there's another marksman. Uh, I think there's two or three bullseyes total. Uh, the bullseye is in our lobby. Were they made uh, a few of those? I think, I want, well, and that's one of those things, like, sometimes when they make that stuff, like, yeah. adding the second and the third isn't too bad, because, like, if you're... Oh! <laughs> See, I didn't die at all. Yeah, you did. You handed the controller over. No, the game crashed. That's what happened. I no, didn't die. Right. Well, that counts as dying. You had to restart. Exactly. The that doesn't count as chat. Does that count as dying? Yeah, chat. I think it crashed counts as dying, right? Uh, Angela's off with Max Apogee doing Lombax stuff. It says Lieutenant Dastardly Dildo, our favorite name that I get to repeat on the chat all the time. <laughs> uh, favorite Christmas movie. Yeah. He, yeah, we definitely have that. Favorite Christmas movie, says Setzer David. I, man, everyone's just in the Christmas mood all of a sudden, huh? Die Hard and 
Well, uh, it has to be Die Hard, happen. right? Let's say not <laughs> Die Hard. You take Die Hard out of the. If, if not for Die Hard, I would say Gremlins is up there. Um, oh. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is up there. I always felt bad in that scene where she talks about the dad dying when he like. Oh tries yeah. Tries to go through the chimney. So that, like ruined it. Oh <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah kid, um, yeah. What's her name again? I don't um, know. I don't know, know her name. Yeah. She's from um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. Also. No. Oh yeah, you gotta wait. You gotta time those. Yeah. Um, I mean, Christmas Story would have to be up there. Home Alone's great. Oh, Home Alone's pretty good. Yeah. So uh, good. Scrooge is really good. Uh, it doesn't get a lot of love. I call it a new classic, but honestly, I I love Elf. Yeah, Elf is kind of the most modern yeah. Christmas yeah. that is classic it. for yeah. sure, uh, and one that I frequently watch around that time of year. I love Bad Santa too. So good, it's yeah. yeah. I never saw the sequel. Like I heard the sequel wasn't any good, and I probably should still watch it because it might be good. But I love the original. The original is hilarious. I heard both, like yes and no, that it was good and, and not. So I should I should rent that this year as my. There we go. Let's pull that. To, Oh, that should. Okay, now they're right. overturning it. Uh, po so uh, they're saying it does count as a death. Lieutenant Dastardly said yes. Pogdoc says no. Cheesy Zimbabwe says no. Raphael Zaglin says no. Link Nitas in speed running hard lock equals run die. So yeah, it's a death. Setzer Devin says technically the game killed you. So yeah, it counts. Uh, so that's three, right? It's three and three right there. So. Um, yeah, well. Every death is a valid death since dynamic tuning doesn't care for the type of death. Uh, well, okay, that's interesting. Uh, was this planet inspired by Star Wars Coruscant? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it was just like Metropolis nice. and then making planets like that. It was, you know, we hadn't really seen Coruscant that much. It does look um, a little Coruscant, though. It's really good. Yeah, like, like, I mean, sure, but. Yeah, you could yeah, draw. Yeah, I, I, I see how you get the idea, but I think we made it a planet at this point. We were just kind of doing our own thing. What's that really old Christmas movie? I can't place the name. Miracle on 34th Street, or are you talking about It's a Wonderful Life? I think those are the two options. Uh, well, depending like, on how old they are asking it, because sometimes they're like 14 they're like, and they're talking about Elf. They're yeah. like, what's that? <laughs> oh, my that's grandparents. the really old Christmas that movie. Back before the war. <laughs> Uh, Medi in depth says it's not a death, but JR Sweezy says it is a death. Uh, Game Slam Team says, you, since you guys are third party, we ever make a Nintendo system game, also please make a Switch platformer. Yeah, you know, I thought, uh, like, since you guys are third party, as soon as you read that, I'm like, oh, here comes some Nintendo begging. Uh, and then it's like, would, would you ever make a Nintendo game? And then, oh, I'm going to beg for the Nintendo port platforming game. Uh, uh, not to yes. say that we wouldn't make a Nintendo game, it just has to be, you know, like, we're not opposed to it, you know, it's just always has to fit in with people we have available and a publisher and an idea and all that jazz. I think a lot of people love the Switch though here, I, myself included. So. Freaking love this weapon. Oh, the Belcher? Yeah, because yeah, you gotta yeah. time, you got to time it right, and it has that little it's so skill. Good. It's kind of like Gears of War skill mechanic. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we're... <laughs> You've missed a lot of fun, random crap today, but um, we're playing Ratchet and Clank Future, A Crack in Time on PlayStation 3. This is Insomniac Live, show where we play our games and other people's games and old games with all sorts of people from all over Insomniac. Uh, my name's James Stevenson, I'm here with Robbie Cox, who's one of our production support technicians, Corey Hoover, who is our... Uh, one of our, he, he runs the show from behind the computer most of the time, and he hosts... The man behind the man. Yeah. Man of magic. Um, so, uh, you know, we've got him over here, and someone said, uh, there's a tradition on Poland that on public television channel Christmas, Home Alone must be playing each and every year, seriously. Um, Sheep in Poland, we have a tradition oh. where on oh, TBS, okay. which is a, a, a cable oh. network They're here, floating. they do Did a whole, too? they do a 24-hour marathon of Christmas Story every year. Oh, so yeah. where all they do is play Christmas Story for like 24, <laughs> 24 hours. Straight. Oh yeah, um, which is kind of like when I was on a cruise ship and I watched Force Awakens for three straight times. Jesus, yeah. which was awesome. And I will defend Force Awakens. You want to get back into that Star Wars ship? We actually, I'll tell you, of our last two shows, we have most of the calendar planned out for our last shows of the year. Um, well, I want to keep talking about the Jedi stuff because I think the game crashed oh, right when I brought Jedi. that up. Oh, favorite yeah, Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Favorite Jedi. You said Mace. Okay, so we have Mace Windu. I said Obi-Wan. Young Obi-Wan. Well, no, I like old Obi-Wan too. Just Obi-Wan in general. Okay. Where are you at? I like Spoonhead. You know Spoonhead? The, is he the, the guy that looks like his his head is a spoon. 
Is he the one? Are they all sitting in like the conference? Yeah, circle? yeah. He's like, in the swing. Oh, he has yeah. a really long neck <laughs> yeah. up into the head. Yeah. Well, you it's never like, even see that guy do anything. <laughs> you know, that guy just sits the there, right? <laughs> He's gotta be careful when he goes through the drive-through. It's like, oh, it's like that little tiny neck. It's like just gonna snap it, man. Oh yeah, dude. It's like, man, he must be really good with the force to make up for that ridiculous. Does he even have a line? <laughs> it probably like cuts to him once and he says something. Yeah, he does have one line. Native head dialogue. That's you know? the lamest. <laughs> the lamest Jedi. Any favorite Jedi picks in the chat? He's also the strongest. If you look it up online, he has the most force out of anyone. No, Yoda. What? Does he have the most midichlorians? Is that what it is? All right. Midichlorians are uh, not canon, though, right? Yeah, they are. They're in. They're in Episode One. Everything in Episode One is canon. Well, now that Disney has it, I think they're trying to play away from them. Hold well, they're like not emphasizing. Yeah, them, yeah exactly. They're still canon. You can't just uh, say that, yeah, stuff that wasn't is not. Yeah, that's a good point. Mini Hood, 1997's so James Arnold Taylor voices Obi Wan in the Clone Wars and does a sensational job and uh, has done the voice for me on occasion. Nice. In fact, it was Comic Con. The first time he ever did the voice for me was Comic Con for a crack in time when I was talking to him about how much I love his work as Obi Wan and he said, yeah, well, thank you. Oh, I can't even do a good Obi Wan impression right now. Um, he just busted it out. Like, my young Padawan. He said, "Thank you, my young princess." That's awesome. It was, uh, yeah, he did the he did the Obi Wan voice, and I was like, <laughs> "It was so good." Podtastic says, "Kit this though." Podcast, okay. what you do in your own time, that's private. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kit Fisto is like, has a little big, he's the smiling Jedi, I think. And so a lot of people love Kit Fisto because he's the smiling one. Kid Anakin is the best Jedi. All right, Seth Sir David, thanks for the troll comment. Yeah. Uh, gotta be Mace Windu, great flavored lightsaber, remaster resistance. Thank you very much. Link, Lincoln Edo says, Mr. Zircon doesn't need to stream on Twitch to be recognized as a ruthless killer. That's a good one, actually, Lincoln Edo. Uh, Raphael Zaglin says I've never watched Star Wars. I don't know the reason. Get out of here. Yeah, man, you should you should get on that. I think if you're in the United States, you can get the original trilogy on Blu-ray for twenty bucks, and uh, that's a that is a <laughs> terrific investment for movies that you should watch like a hundred times each. I'm sure you can really literally appreciate. just go to Google and like watch Star Wars entire like episodes one through six right now free, and then you'll be able to see it. Probably, probably. Um, and that way you might get the one without the uh, added in oh. scenes. Uh, Sensor David comes back and says Obi Wan really is the best Jedi, young or Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah, the original cut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and I, if you haven't watched Rebels, the whole like Obi Wan Darth Maul arc on Rebels. Come on. <laughs> Justin, not that we condone piracy, Padawan Robbie. <laughs> Oh, I didn't say download it. <laughs> I'm just saying for 20 bucks you can get the movie on Blu-ray. This is and true. Watch, like, What's the word? Acquire. I could acquire it. There's a lot of people that could very... Well, well okay. If you buy the movie on Blu-ray, then who cares after how you watch it? At least you, you own a copy, I guess. Uh, Plo Kloon is a pretty cool Jedi, but the way he went out was horrible. Yeah, a lot of the Jedi oh, had to allow that. I don't know why that got censored. No, I passed it. Okay. All right. Body bear. Um, now we, I'm gonna use my force powers again to break the game. Craving the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the follow. They got it saved. <laughs> okay. Uh, I go up here. Is that what I'm doing? Put the boots on. Yeah. I don't have them on. Press right. Okay. There you go. Yeah, oh, that was why I couldn't hover boot earlier when I was trying to, because I didn't press right. Oh, it's just going from one little thing to the other. I think you gotta like kill these guys. Yeah, and then, then you gotta help. Yeah. You gotta help Azimuth. He's like going with his whole. Asmund's basically using like the Darth Maul lightsaber. Gun. Pretty much. Okay, get him out, and then... So that Sonic Eruptor I was saying earlier about like... Uh, in the like alpha version when we were like making the game, there was like the music when they were coming up in front. When we were making Resistance 3, that Sonic Eruptor weapon right there. Uh -huh. um, Joe Capelli had it in yeah. Resistance as in place for some other weapon that we were making. Atomizer. Oh, okay. Before that, you know, like, so you pull pull yeah, I remember yeah. pulled that out. It was so great having Joe Capelli pull this guy out in the resistance oh, world. That's really funny. Waste my ammo. And I think we were trying to, like, maybe keep it in there because that was the one crossover that we could do. It was like we could have ratchet stuff in resistance, but we couldn't have resistance stuff in ratchet. Right, because you can't put M rated game stuff in it. Yeah. In an E10 plus game. Mm -hmm. Uh. 
a long time ago someone asked if Up Your Arsenal was the name of the game worldwide, and no it wasn't, it was Ratchet and Clank 3. Mm -hmm. I think Up Your Arsenal was deemed too offensive in, in Europe. We don't ever use the word arse, but there it's basically, actually is the word ass. So in Europe it essentially is legitimately just Up Your Asshole. <laughs> or, uh, it's like, like Up Your Arsenal, or Up Your, you know, Up Your Ass and all, I guess. Um, was that the last PS3 one? No, that was PS. Uh, yes, no, it was oh, Deadlock, PS2 but one, Deadlock yeah. uh, on PS2, Deadlock, and then there, that became Gladiator. Say, that, yeah, that was a And Going Commando was locked and loaded. Okay. And then these games, they weren't the future games when you went overseas. It was just Ratchet and Clank. They didn't pick up the future title. Which so it was just Ratchet and Clank and Crack in Time. Crack. Uh, which maybe was maybe that was Europe being more adult than we were about like trying to go all like you know Mega Man X the yeah, future like, future yeah. it was a sort of like how do we delineate these games are maybe like slightly different or you know all right. upgraded story I guess Ooh. so that was kind of the thought process yeah. at the time and then we even yeah. dropped it uh, was like Nexus which in theory is kind of within the future storyline a little bit or kind of yeah, in the future storyline doesn't that. have the future title and we dropped future when we went to all for one yeah. um, Full Frontal Assault I think kept its name all for one kept its name and then into the Nexus was just Nexus in Europe so that was again a, a change that was the one that I always thought like Full Frontal Assault I was like dude that's like like nowadays, that would totally not pass. Like a game being called like Full Frontal Assault, like yeah, that is pushing way too many boundaries. Yeah, I'm that surprised we got away with that. Offensive and like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Am I doing this right, or like, am I supposed to kill the drop ships? I know you're supposed to kill those. You damage drop ships. I think you like. Are the drop ships gonna keep coming until I kill them? I think so. Because yeah. I'm not really hitting. No, them. I think you don't have. I think you just have to kill these. I think yeah, it's those the end of it. Okay. But again, you want to use that when the when the bar goes out to its widest, it's super powerful. Yeah. So when it lights up, when it's like kind of light, when it's bright white, that's when it's at its most powerful moment to shoot it. But Zircon will kill everything that's for right. Zircon, <laughs> Zircon, Zircon's OP. Took it out. Zircon's OP. I don't use Zircon. Like, I get Zircon to level 5 and I stop using him unless I really need to, because it's just... Well, I'm doing a perfect playthrough, so... Oh, Full Frontal Assault was Q-Force in Europe. That's right. It was Q-Force yeah. in Europe. Okay, we did drop Full it. Frontal Assault there. So yeah, that's right. See, I'm like, I'm, the there's so many game. I've like Jarvis. lost track. Oh, yeah, there really is so many of them. Uh, Networker M on the subject of Nexus Insomniac's Twitter has previously said Ratchet and Talwin are together. Any comment? Yeah, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. Can you say that again in non-geek speak? Confirmed. Um, why I got a problem with interspecies relationships? <laughs> Um, Animal husbandry only on Insomniac Live. <laughs> oh dear. Um, you should do a real Ratchet and Clank game for Android, not like the Infinite Runner version before the Nexus. This is Zeke for a day. Um, oh yeah, I have that one. Before. Seems unlikely. Woo, woo. Uh, Am I doing it? Because we're not really making any mobile games oh. right now. I guess Sony could choose to do it, but and we didn't do the twenty seconds. Nexus and we didn't make, yeah, we didn't yeah. make before the Nexus. We or no, or well, now I don't remember. We, I, don't think I, we I did. say that I don't remember how much of that we had an involvement. I don't. I think, think it, we like did the it involvement was probably like Billy over in NC, just what? like making what? sure what? one of the Where's two the, the next like, thing? Okay, to the bolt sync. I don't know. Like you got to day. figure it out. Because I'm like, Corey. We, we didn't even do anything over in Burbank like with that, and we were helping out a tiny bit with like yeah. I don't think there was much on that front. Uh, crap. Which way have I not gone yet? Uh, way? Remaster Resistance. Who runs the Insomniac Twitter account? Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> me? <laughs> Someone in this room. <laughs> me? Uh, but oh, Ryan no. Schneider posts on it, and, oh, okay. um, is it, do you have to go up the, you don't have to go up the, uh, Ryan Schneider. Oh, oh there it is. There is. There is. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. there. There's two. And one to your left now, too. One to your left. Go, 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 go. And more to your left. More to your left. There you go. Oh! oh yeah. Was that on like zero seconds? Uh, is that it or is there more? It almost seemed like the frame rate like dips for a oh, second. Oh, no, no, there's, <laughs> there's your radar behind you, behind you, oh, behind oh, you. Oh, the radar. radar. Duh. Yeah, the radar, dude. Yeah, I think there's like three sets of these or something. I don't think I'm going to get to this oh, one. Oh, turn to your left. I can't go that way. Is it up go, on it's, top? It's, go, go there, straight. And then left. Oh. Yeah, there you go. I don't think I can get it in time. In the left, left. Yeah, you got it. You got it. No way. Oh, there it is! There's the death! I ran out of time. There's the death! I knew it was coming. Uh, oh. 
Tim and uh, Tim and Ryan Schneider also you will find on Twitter. Um, that's. You can tell if it's Tim doing the tweet because he'll leave the little like kiss emoji at the end of all his tweets as a signature. <laughs> I, I tell him, dude, no more kissy emojis. But he is just that doesn't. the the face doing a little smoochy? Yeah, yeah it's a little. <laughs> he's, yeah. Tim's a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, he is. Okay, oh, yeah, don't do anything on this, do you? Just wait. Okay, all right, two more to go. Let's do this shit. That puzzle was deceptive. I felt like I had a good understanding of the layout, of the oh. space, and oh. I did not. That was weird. Yeah, that was weird. It was like I missed the ramp, but then like it auto ramped me across. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm so dead. <clears throat> um, Code of Comics is bye, guys. See you Wednesday. Cool. Bye, Code of Comics. See you later. Uh, we're wrapping up here soon, too. Anyway, you're not going to miss too much. Um, someone said, would a PS4 port of Nexus be on the table? Yeah, I wish. Um, I actually did like... Like I, I seriously was like, guys, we need to port this to PS4. Like way before when it came, before it even came out. Um, but as a lot of you know, our engine is very different than our PS3 engine is very different than the PS4 engine, and um, and just some of the stuff there uh, is, uh, or the Ratchet engine, I should say, because oh, what am I doing? No, yeah, that's it. That's what that's what the same spot I did. Yeah, this at. is the like hidden. This is the trick, if I remember right, because it's like you never go this way, but there's this little hidden back area. Um, <laughs> oh, I wasn't even close. <laughs> yeah, you weren't, you weren't even going to make that at all. And then you go up this thing. Oh, but that was the last one? Yeah, oh, that was the very yeah. last one before you died. <laughs> I, that's what I was like, Corey, you got to get anyway, this. Like, uh, even, even if you think about uh, Fuse, which was our last like our last game was yeah. on the new engine. Um, so it's just like, it's a really tough thing to port. I mean, we would love for it to get ported someday if... You know, Sony decided it would be a good thing to port. We'd be all for it. Um, but no plans at this time. It's a little trickier than you might think. Remaster Resistance. Here, any positions open that don't involve coding? Need someone to make you coffee? Need someone to hassle Sony about Resistance 4? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to look on our website. There's a bunch of positions open. I'm sure some of them don't involve coding, but they probably involve other artistic or technical skills because that's usually what happens here. Yeah, we're always putting up our available positions yeah. up there, so... Definitely check that out. We were looking for a new dog groomer because our last one um, <laughs> went and bought all this food on the way to the dog grooming competition, and then like we opened up the back door to the truck, and there's like mustard and ketchup all over the dogs, and we were Such like, mess. "What the hell?" <laughs> I wish we had dog grooming service. I wish we had dogs allowed in the office. That's act that's a plot point from the movie Dumb and Dumber. That's not um, real life. Uh, See, I, I was, was like, "Where did you pull this out of?" And now I get it. You yeah. didn't catch on. No, I didn't catch on. <laughs> I mean, you're all, I'll give you the benefit that you're playing the game, too. Yeah, I, See, I, I was like, like the chat at the same there was time. Definitely the confusion at first, and then like catch up. Oh! So. <laughs> so. Um, We'd have a sweet ass Mutt band Cuts, too. is that what it was? Yep. I saw that Mutt Cuts van at uh, Comic Con when we went down there for Sunset Overdrive. They had the Mutt Cuts van just like chilling out there. See, so you want to know if that's like a recreation or if that was like. The oh, the real one? one? Yeah, the OG. It looks someone. pretty good, but I mean, nowadays it's hard to tell. Yeah, think about it. when was that, like 92 or something? Like 94. Yeah. yeah. That show would be so tattered. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh my god, it'd be gross. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, oh, like, so, Have you seen there's this Instagram post of like the. Puppet used for Hoggle in Labyrinth, no. and they found it out of storage, and it's like, it's the most disturbing, creepy thing yeah. you've ever seen in your Cause life. Cause, latex, it's all yeah, it's up. melting, and you can see the metal frame underneath, so it's like it looks like a rotting corpse. <laughs> yeah. And Hoggle already looks kind of ugly to begin <laughs> yeah. with, and then when you see him, like, it's kind of like when the Terminator is like, you know, <laughs> got shot up a whole bunch, so like part of his skeleton yeah. is sticking through. Oh my god, it's terrifying. On a very similar note, I saw one of those, but it was the one. Oh, it was the harmonica Goomba from Super. Oh Mario. my god, that would be terrifying! Yeah, <laughs> dude, I gotta send you this one. Oh yeah, <laughs> and you gotta send me the. Yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, but I, it's on. You can buy this thing and put it in your house. <laughs> it's like MovieReplicas.com or something like. And this guy is like, it's terrifying. Anybody will love to have this yeah. on display for a Halloween thing. Real conversation starter. <laughs> Hey man, different strokes. Yeah. Some people like to put up, you know, fine art pieces and nice furniture in their living room, but this guy, oh. Harmonica Goomba. Harmonica Goomba. Uh, we probably should even wrap up here. Sorry, I was going to say, yeah, I it's like that. We should wrap this up um, with that weird 
tangent we were just on. How's our saving going? Okay, it doesn't, we'll save again just to make sure next time when we start, we will be where we left off because this is twice now because of some weird bug, I think. It must just be a weird bug in that part of the great clock. Yeah. Um, so that's all today, everybody. Um, we hope you enjoyed rejourneying into a, a crack in time with us. I did. Uh, I will fun. say uh, Kirby K, Queen of Fastoon, thank you for the follow. And Sasha185, thank you for the follow. It's crazy we've already got 184 other Sashas. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of Sashas ever since the, ever since going Commando, man. Uh, let's I, see. I just caught that. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> hey, it's okay to be a little slow. I was earlier. Uh, I'm going to see if there's any final things we should talk about. Lincoln Edo, Networker M, Pogdoc, thanks for all the questions. Sheep from Poland. Thank you for all of that. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in today. We'll be back. Uh, <laughs> Remaster Resistance is um, the most persistent. Yeah, yeah he really wants that, he wants that Resistance really 4 and or the Marksman. Um, but come back on Wednesday. We'll be playing a little more. We're going to pick up where we left off on Uncharted Lost Legacy with Mike Yoshi. He used to work at Naughty Dog and didn't work on that game. So it'll be fun to talk to him about working at Naughty Dog and everything. And then uh, Friday, we're going to get into Assassin's Creed Origins, which has been one of my surprise games of this holiday, and I'm excited about it. And Game Slam Team, it's okay about Nintendo port begging. I'm used to seeing it everywhere else I go on the internet right now, so no problem. Uh, hope you guys had a good one. We'll see you guys Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, for Uncharted Lost Legacy. Bye!